Now, this is a terrible thing to do to Grandma and Grandpa's portrait, but it is pretty funny. Happy Halloween. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go! Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad, and I am in Adamstown, Pennsylvania, which is arguably the antiques capital of the United States, and I'm very curious to see what and who we might find here, because I am at the Adams Antique Mall. And there's a couple of other people here that you might recognize as well. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Kat is showing us these portraits and she said she's doing really well with them and I'm not surprised because they're very popular. The tin cup is a neat adjunct to these ABC ceramic plates that kids had. This is a flying saucer phone. It's from the 70s but it's a really cool thing by Northern Telecom. You don't see much. And the old green wall phone of course is a good one. Jocelyn picked this place for us to meet because they'd been at a flea market all morning and she wanted us to see some cool old rare stuff or at least scarce like this fan here. The ball fan is an unusual one. This is a really cool shape of typewriter too. See how the arms with the letters come from the sides rather than the center like we're used to in more modern pieces. It's neat. And I think I found my first buy. The Fleur de Lis bookends are great little thermometer here is cute too. Look at the cat coming out of the bag on that. I think I've got to get that for my advertising friends. Okay, this one is half off everything over $10 and there's some nice jewelry in here and since I didn't stay in New York and buy jewelry, I'm going to look real quickly and see if I see anything that I like. I saw some Coro. There's a lot of things in here that look nice, but they're just sort of like nice looking. But there are a few sign pieces. The Panino here, that's a good brand that you don't see very often. Bakelite buckles, apple juice Bakelite. I like the carved lucite butterfly, and I'm not sure what the price is, but carved lucite, sometimes they don't charge what they do for the Bakelite, and the lucite really is just as collectible. There's a lot of really pretty stuff in here, but at half off, it's still really kind of at my retail, so. We're going to look on to the corners of the store where things might be cheaper. Cases used to really throw me too, and then I ran into one where they were having a half-off sale and everything was so cheap, and so I started to figure out, like, look for the thing that doesn't belong with the other stuff, and that's, yeah, yeah, like if... that's not what they normally Because that's not their normal thing, and that's usually the way that I found bargains. Cadillac promo car that looks like a mid-50s. Well, you could consider this an early fairy lamp, this bejeweled brass piece is late Victorian and it is more of a chamber stick than anything. They have it priced at $275, but isn't it beautiful? Here's an unusual Weller pattern. Early floral with more of an Art Deco look around 1930. So Jocelyn said they just got in the RS Prussia chocolate pot and that's a nice example of one. Chocolate pots pour from the top whereas a coffee pot pours lower, so that's a way you can tell them apart. Now let's see if we can see the mark on this one. It's gonna be really hard with my camera underneath, but that is a correct mark, so that is original. There are reproductions of those, but the marks are wrong, and if you look at a marks book you or online, you can, there's great resources so that you can tell. Well, I have to admit, this is so cool because in case you didn't recognize everybody, in the back there is Dagny and her daughter, and then, uh, <laughs> Jocelyn and Drew and their kids and then Kat from Nurse Flipper is way down there So we've got crazy lamp lady and we've got Nurse Flipper and we are just having a great time because we all love this stuff But I'm gonna let them look down there while I show you these nodders because there's a really interesting group of them here There's some that you don't really see very often Santa's hard to find 70 with the discount the policeman with the Hitler mustache I don't really get that mustache, but he's 42 quite a collection there actually one of these radium ore revigorators and this is a different kind this is a torbina from allentown pennsylvania not far from here in the 1920s and 30s you were supposed to fill this with your water overnight because the uranium and radium in the lining would 
irradiate the water. It was supposed to help prevent all sorts of things like arthritis, flatulence, senility. You know, I mean, you probably get a terrible, terrible amount of arsenic, lead, uranium, and other things, but hey, if it keeps you from having flatulence, it's worth it. Here's a nice fancy coverlet with multiple colors. I love this coverlet. Yeah, I think they're just so great. The one down here is actually dated 1866. Oh, the one hanging uh, 18, here? 1849. Really? Yeah, oh, wow. 1849. Oh, that's neat. I love the ones with the dates. This is great space. The crockery in here is really good. Hart & Company, Stoneware Leone. Beautiful stuff here. This is the one that Drew was just saying is dated 1849. The only problem about this mall is the sound system is really kicking in the background, so I'm going to have to speak over some of what happened while we were there. One thing that happened was I found this great collection of matchbooks. Look at all of these interesting ones with the shapes and the interiors printed. These are the more collectible of the old matchbooks. The Studebaker one up there is priced at 150 for the Studebaker Dictator. That was a late 30s car, and yes, it will sell for that price. This is a really great piece of Weller pottery that you almost never see. By the 1930s when this was made, they were mainly doing molded ware to try to stay in business during the Depression. And this was one of their few artware lines with the comets and the stars. It is called Geode, according to the dealer. I have rarely seen pieces from this line over the years. It's just beautiful and so studied and great glazes. It's just a whole lot of fun. It's also a whole lot of money, priced over $300, but it is that scarce. One neat thing about shopping in Pennsylvania is you will see true antiques. You'll see Rockingham pottery from the early 1800s. You'll see dovetailed boxes made by hand by the Amish. You will see basketry. You will see tollware. It's really neat to be in a place that's one of the original 13 colonies because you get a much older variety of merchandise here. So this was a store premium for the a and Uh-huh. So they would do these little kid scenes. Right. And give them out to customers, but also on the back. Oh, there's all the advertising. Wow, for 8 o'clock breakfast coffee at 25 cents a pound. Wow. And a lot of times they'll put how many stores they have, and you can date the piece by how many stores. How many stores there are, right, as they expanded. Yeah, because they were such a big deal. Headquarters 35 and 37 VZ Street. That's right where the World Trade Center was. Oh, wow. I do pretty well with the footstools, too, actually. You're halfway through the trip, so you can well, start buying the big stuff, right? <laughs> That's cute. Um, I, well, I unloaded all of my non-breakables at Joslyn shop and they're, uh -huh. gonna, they're gonna ship them back to me. Oh, that's nice. It's supposed to be the yay, Y-E-I, it's the corn people. But what's strange to me about this is it's tied at one corner and then the other corner has fringe and that doesn't seem right. They usually should be one or the other, so I kind of wonder if it might be a Mexican one made to look like it. That just seems like it's not finished right on both ends. There's something to me about when they take a uh, print and then paint over parts yeah. of it like that. I don't know why, but that's just has always so appealed great. to me. It was really popular around 1910, apparently. I don't know why, but I just think it's cool. It brings out the detail. Except, is he supposed to be the Grim Reaper? I just noticed he's carrying this huge oh, scythe. I hope, I hope not. not. <laughs> She's reading to him, so it must be nice. <laughs> now, one nice thing is, even though you're in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania has a big population. We're close enough to Philadelphia, you are going to see modernism. This big finial is interesting, and it is just a finial. It's not a decanter. This does have a mark on it. It's Silvestri no dot com. So this is 1980s. It's 240. Now this is all half off, and I didn't look at this Kachina drawing to see if it might be somebody important. It's nicely done. I don't think I can get 85 for it though, unless it's signed by somebody of import, and I don't see any signature for an Orvac. At half off everything, I have to admit, even though these old Santas are expensive, it's tempting to look just in case something turned out to be like the snowman candy at half of 59. If it was just a little bigger, I'd take that. 
ones. But there are some really oh, cute yeah. ones. It's fun just to look, if nothing else. Promotional car, and it's half off. Let's see which one it is. Oh, 175 to start with, though. An Impala. They made more of these than any other single model in the history of American automotive production. They just couldn't crank them out fast enough. Corvettes are about $15 each with the discount. That's kind of a typical price. Let's see what we have here. 40 on the T-Bird. I don't think I can get 80 for that model. It's not a great color. Yes, sir. Can I help you with something? This one is old. Uh, no, I just was wanting to look at this one. Plymouth okay. Belvedere. Some very nice skookum. Again, just a tiny bit more than I'm willing to pay, and it's too bad because I could really use some of these. This one in the middle is Wyandotte, and you can tell them sometimes because it's more like sheet metal that they've pressed around. So even if it's not marked, it's different than the cast iron ones. Wyandotte got through the depression because they did sheet metal and it didn't cost as much. A lot of the cast iron makers had trouble in that period. This guy's cool, the old coal wagon. It's too bad the horse is broken because this would sell well where I am. In the same period that Matchbox cars and Hot Wheels were really popular, there was a company from England called Dinky Toys making these. The old Nash Rambler, the Studebakers here. Here's a 55 Studebaker Speedster. They were a little larger, a little more expensive, and very collectible now. And I like the Pepsodent display because this would be really handy for lots of little stuff and then two shelves of display. It's priced at 65 and they're doing 20% off. That makes it about 50 I don't know if that's cheap enough for me to get or not. I'll have to think about that one. Come on, sell us it right now. It's, it's hard sometimes to know how to do it, but um, yeah, she's got the experience. She's really good, so whatever she tells you is true. It's true. Everything mommy says. Everything she ever tells you in your whole life is true. That's right. <laughs> and don't forget it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is 20% off, and it's a short flamingo, but I'm so short of flamingos right now, I might just do it anyway. It's a souvenir of, let's see, Tennessee. Yes, there's lots of flamingos in Chattanooga. I don't really get that, but I still like it. We've had the little ash trees in the past. I think we're going to buy this as well. And I'm going to take this because it is a probably 1920s or 30s alligator. He's just got a good face, and he's a little under 20, but alligator novelties do really well for me in Florida. I have to admit I'm having so much fun talking to everybody that I'm not really filming and I'm not really shopping. So I'm going to try to pay a little more attention to why we're here, besides the fact that we're having a good time together, and see if I can show you folks some interesting stuff along the way. Some neat little tins here. You know, I like the advertising. This is for clothing. Tailored in Rochester since 1849. I assume that's Rochester, New York, and that's priced at 125. The old zip soda font. Everything here is 20% off, but you know, we're in a place where advertising sells really well, so I'm not sure that's affordable for me. But there are some really neat things. I like the chalkware with the sherry. This one's 30% off. They've got a nice Russell Wright. I always like that cedar green color. Thorn handles are things that uh, you see in the Victorian period a lot but I think this one's newer because it feels really sort of oily to me and look at that big polish in the bottom so I think this is a reproduction they did a lot of repros of that kind of glass in the 90s this one's a 50% closeout sale I don't see a lot of old stuff in here though but I do like to look at perfume because even newer perfume can sell for real money and this one is Paloma Picasso and the woman who does my accounting is a fan of Paloma Picasso and she said this stuff is hard to find because it's been discontinued and it's an almost full bottle for $15. So I'll probably buy that if it smells good. We just want to make sure it doesn't smell like vinegar. This is a piece that looks like Nylok's Mission Wear. Nylok is the reverse spelling of kaolin, which was the clay they used from Arkansas, and it had these natural colors in it, so it wasn't dyed, it wasn't glazed. It actually looked like this when they formed the piece. It was a big deal in the 1920s, and collectors sure like it. These usually price over $100. So nowadays we call these bobbleheads, but in the old days they were called knotters. And look at this amazing collection. I just had to show more. At 30% off, they're priced still full retail. There's some old school pricing here, but there's also some old school figures we can't find anymore. Ben Casey on the left from TV. 
boy, they're just such an incredible collection. Original six hockey players. You just don't see this stuff anywhere anymore. In the 1920s and 30s, Tiffin glass painted, sometimes in coraline with the glitter, and sometimes just freehand on top of their satin glass. Another beautiful thing Tiffin did with painted wares in the 30s, because it was inexpensive, was to make parrot-shaped lampshades. This one's got a little damage, but it's only, gosh, with the discount, $60. Northwood grape and cable in the carnival class. All right, well, Drew found the first really good find, I think, and that is because these are... Trench art. Trench art, and he said that the bottom piece is a 108 millimeter shell, mm -hmm. and you said navy. How did you know navy? Um, that's the size guns they were shooting off the ships. Okay. Uh, but they it's like they polished it down, took the markings off. Yeah, look at the design on here. Usually I see the shells turn into lamps. Right. Because I've got a couple at the shop. Lamps and vases, mm -hmm. yeah. And those are really neat, and they're so uh, art modern. I think they're really well done, and half of 95 is a great price so score some really nice tall pottery the rookwood is the two-tone on the right these other pieces other than the roseville fox glove are trenton pottery from new jersey they made some really great shapes in the art deco era because they were very simple this is a pretty scarce piece here whaling gregory then you pull back and the art deco figures are pretty impressive as well here we go, $20 for this. This is much cleaner than the one I sold for $39, except for this schmutz here. This seems to be some sort of oil, but it looks to me like it will come off. I'm not concerned about that, strangely enough. I can clean this. So because of that, I'll take the bargain, because the dealer didn't want to do the work. Now, this is a terrible thing to do to Grandma and Grandpa's portrait, but it is pretty funny. Happy Halloween. There was a guy in the 50s named Fred Kyle who did these sort of overstuffed looking figures for football players, but these bowling figures were by him as well. They're a lot of fun. Great whimsy. $150 each. Starnes Pottery of California did not make a whole lot of stuff, but they made this whimsical frog, Froggy Wendacorton. You see he's got a bouquet. Let's see if he's got the mark on the bottom. He doesn't, but if you look in the old cookie jar books, this definitely is Starnes. Okay, I'm not saying that this isn't common enough, but for $10, there's sure money in this. I mean, this is a $25 piece pretty much anywhere you sell it. It's definitely McCoy. It's got the sloppy glaze on the bottom. It's got a firing crack. It's not a real crack. It's just McCoy was not high quality in this period of time. But it's got a glaze chip. That's the reason it's $10. So, goodbye. It really pays to look things over carefully if you're a dealer. This is one of the better Wonder Horses I've seen. Looks well made. 150, the colors are really great. Probably in the 1970s era. So, Majolica or not? Well, it is Majolica in terms of the glaze and the way it's made. It's just that it's pretty new. This is Portuguese, and the Portuguese started doing this style in the 19, late 80s, early 90s because it was so popular in the antique stores at the time. So it's got the look, but it's a little lighter weight, and when you see the Portuguese-made mark, that tells you that it's a pretty piece. It is Majolica in type, but it is a newer piece of Majolica, not an original Victorian era or earlier piece. Let's see what we have over here. This is interesting looking because the top looks like Fenton, but let's take a closer look. So the base looks more Italian. It does have wear. It has some age. The base looks modernist, the polish is not a Fenton polish, and look at the crimps, they are not even. There's f four there, there's three there, so that tells us this is either Czech or Italian. I'm leaning towards Italian because of the shape of the base, and it looks like a piece probably from about 1970, judging on the color. It's $89. I find it kind of interesting, but it just seems like a strange mix of two styles. I don't think I have a customer for that. Let's see if this is Blanco, or perhaps Greenwich Flint Craft, or someone else. I'm leaning towards Greenwich Flint Craft, which was another modernist glass maker from the United States. It has an optic. The Blanco optic is stronger in the pieces that look like this, and the shape's a little different, and the color is not quite the same. So I would say that this is probably Greenwich. It seems to be maybe a 1970s piece by the weight and feel and wear. 40% off summer sale. There's a lot of Swarovski with the boxes. These little pieces do sell. 
They sell pretty well, in fact. They sell at about the prices that you see on here, so it would take a little more discount than that to persuade me, but they are nice. Here's the thing in the booth that could be the most useful to me is this chrome stand. It's rather substantial. It looks like it's vintage. The dealer's tag says it's vintage. I don't see any construction methods that don't seem like it would be any newer than the 1980s. It's 40% off, so that would make it 72. I'd have to put 145 on it, but I'm not anxious to sell things like this because it's good, heavy, well-made display. Hmm, I think I'll mull that over while I walk around here. This is a piece of hull pottery that you don't see too often. When I first got in the business, I went to a quitting business sale at a Colorado antique shop and they had a bunch of this. This is Hull Continental with the orange and yellow stripes. Made about 1960. Pretty fanciful shapes and the stripes are fun and the colors are fun. This one with their discount is about $55 which is probably still retail. So this is yeah, half yes. off in here, and Kat just found a really good Mandalian purse, I don't, which I is a really cool the thing. One, the other one looks like it's a uh, German, uh, no, it might be German actually, like German steel. I like these Bakelite pieces too. There's a crib toy, and there's a horse. There's a nice little airplane, <laughs> which is a pencil sharpener. And we've oh, got a really, cute red bird with the butterscotch beak. That's a little harder color to find. <laughs> you know, everyone always comes I got my buddy on my uh, yeah, arm well, here. You're not holding a human child. I'm not, no. See, you can be happy and be a clown. All of you traumatized by the clown, so it's because you didn't meet happy the clown first. This is a very nice clock. I did a huge estate sale in Portland, Oregon once where the guy had all sorts of clocks like this. This one is really neat because it's Scatterday's jewelry. I have scatter days now and again. Suburban Club Fine Drinks. I like these racks because they're usually able to be broken down and then you can stack them in your car and use them at shows. It's 245 I mean, this space is not inexpensive, but it does have really cool stuff, so I understand. If I had this stuff, I would want the prices they want too. It's all very nicely graphic, interesting enough subjects, good condition, all of that matters. They're asking $195 on this bunny bread sign. I sold a similar one for $235. I like the old gas station caps. We're far enough east in Pennsylvania that you're going to see stick and spatter is a particular early type of decoration. You'll see these at Winter Tour Museum in Delaware, earlier versions of this. This one is English with a registry mark. So this is going to be mid-Victorian era from Tunstall by the Adams Company. Adams had been around since 1751, the era of a lot of the things you see in Winter Tour. This is a cute little child sewing machine. I'm always a sucker for these. They tend to sell well for me. But one of the feet has a chip, and I'm seeing that it's a little jammed up on the wheel. That's too bad. I'd have bought that. Another Wayland Gregory, and this one's nice because it's out where we can show the base and the signature. Wayland Gregory is up there in the Pantheon with Sasha Bras stuff, as far as very outlandish, very decorative 1950s modernist ceramics. Whimsical, sure, but. There's something to that. Priced at $3.95. It says that the sculptor Grisa de Vey did this about 1930. It just says Phoenix. This is an obscure art pottery. This is something really interesting for me to learn. I have not seen this before and I'm pretty familiar with a lot of American art pottery. And then over here, these are really fun. This is Dorothy Kindell, California with the Beachcombers under the huge sombrero. The giraffe is cool too. There's a lot of neat stuff here. This is Red Wing, believe it or not, 1964. Okay, I like this perfume bottle. That is Italian. I am going to ask to see that because it's half off and that makes it $23 and there's money in that. This is a nice piece too. $195 half price is $97.50. Depending on what kind of stone is in the doors, that also might be a buy. We did pretty well here. I have got to hit the road, unfortunately. I'd love to stay. Jocelyn has given me a brochure that shows all of the places in the area. I said I think maybe I need to just come and do shows here, and she said I think maybe you do. So hopefully I will be getting to the area perhaps a little more frequently because it's pretty amazing for the antique industry. It's definitely a huge center. And then there's the back area, which is huge, and I didn't even begin to look back here. It's too late. I've got to get on the road. 
I will have to come back. What a great place. What a great meetup. It was so fun and just sort of happened to fall together. So I'm very happy. I am with Kat and we're doing a little show and tell because she <laughs> bought something really cool. Tell me what you told me about this because this is just so neat. So these are from the 1939 World Fair. They are art glass pens. So from Corning, New York. Oh yes, Corning Glass where they have the big glass museum. Those are beautiful. Uh, it's amazing. And I collect a lot of World's Fair and I have been to the Corning Glass Museum. I don't remember ever seeing or hearing of these. I don't think they even have a display in their own museum of them. They are beautiful. They are really, really cool. Ooh, and that's the Lundberg Studio with the fish. It that's is. great. Lundberg makes beautiful stuff yes. and it's great because it's got 1975. that. 1975. Oh, this is early for them. Oh, that's interesting. And the fish being in it really is different because they were mainly trying to do Art Nouveau in the Tiffany style, but that is just really something else. I have never seen that. And yeah, that's, that's very early for them. I think someone's gonna love that. It's beautiful. Wow, you guys got great stuff. I should have gotten there earlier. Yes. Yeah, I see a boot full, as they say in England, of stuff. It looks like there's not gonna be any room for them to drive. But I suppose you can keep things on your lap if you have to. Today there's produce, but you can see in the back, tented up through that tent and on these tables here, that they do have flea markets here. And of course, Renegers is right down the road, and so is the Black Angus, and those both operate on Sundays. Unfortunately, I have to get back home. I've been on the road buying for days. So that was a moment at Adam's Antiques, albeit brief. It was so great to see people and to get to meet Kat for the first time, of Nurse Flipper, to get to meet Dagny for the first time, and of course to see Jocelyn and meet Drew for the first time. It was just wonderful. I'm so glad they let me crash their party. I am George the Antique Nomad at the social media you see in the links in the description. It's great to see all of you as well, and we will be around for more adventures and hopefully more meetups like this in the fabulous world of real world antique and vintage. And we'll see you again online. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!